All right, today we're going to take a look at the properties of a kite. A kite is a four-sided figure. That four-sided figure is called a quadrilateral. Now, what's so special about this one? We have one set of consecutive sides that are the same consecutive meaning next to. We have a second set of consecutive sides that are next to, that are both congruent to each other. We have one set of angles uh, that are going to be exactly the same, that are congruent. And our diagonals form, parallel, form perpendicular lines, giving us a right angle in the middle there. So if we were to look, look at the top half of this, I have two small little triangles up there. Those two triangles are congruent to each other. Bottom half, I've got two more triangles. Those two triangles are congruent to each other. So meaning this little piece, that little piece, part of our diagonal are going to be the same to each other. These two, definitely different, but these two are going to be the same. So let's come over. We have a four-sided figure. We have 140 up top, 30 degrees on the bottom. I want to figure out what A and C is. Now, we know that we have to have at least, or we need to have one set of congruent angles. That's going to be A and C. A and C are both going to be the same. I could put an X and an X there. So I know within a four-sided figure, we have a total of 360 degrees. I can add everything up. 140 plus 30 plus 2x. And now just use uh, order of up, or use our inverse operations and get x alone. So 140 and 30 is going to give us 170 minus that 170, leaving us with 2, 190 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and x ends up e being 95 degrees. So there's our two measurements, 95 and 95. Okay, so that's good. What about having a four-sided figure, a kite here, and we're only talking about sides and diagonals and all that. Okay, so before we start figuring out all of these, let's just label everything that we know. Okay, so we have two triangles that are the same. I know that this diagonal going from my congruent angles, this distance in the middle, has to be the same, that, that diagonal gets bisected. So this is a six down there on the bottom. Um, if I'm just looking at this top right triangle here, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. We have a right triangle, we have two sides, we can find the missing side. So we could say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Plug all that in, six squared plus eight squared equals c squared. We don't know that, 36 and 64. C squared gives us 100, square root C equals 10. There's mystery side. So when we're dealing with a kite, we know that this side and this side have to be the same. So there's a 10 there. We have to do the same exact thing for AB over here. We know that we have 6 squared. We know we have 15 squared we have to find our missing AB. Well, we've got 36 plus 225 C squared. When I put those two together, I get 261. In order to undo that exponent, we square root both sides, and C ends up e equaling, well, who cares? Uh, 261, it's gonna be 16 point something, whatever. Let's just leave it as a square root of uh, 261. 261, if you really want to get into it, uh, 16.2 or 3, somewhere like that. 16.2. So these two are the same now. These two are the same now. We have our distances that are the same. Now that we have our kite labeled, let's figure out what we're looking for. BC. Uh, BC, we know is 10. DC, same thing, 10. AB. Uh, about 16.2. AD, radical 261, or about the same thing here, about 16.2. And lastly, ED, oh, that should have been E right there in the middle. ED is going to give us 6. Uh, and if we ask for BD, we could then say 12. Uh, and that's using the properties of kite to figure out our missing sides.